In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to upload data from Google Sheets into Pinecone, a vector database, using a no-code automation tool called NAM. We're going to build an automation that li listens to updates or any changes to your Google Sheets. It's going to get that data and then transform it into vectors and metadata that can be stored into a vector database. This is useful because if you quickly want to see the database, your vector database for your AI agents, you can quickly do that using NAN without using any code. In this example, I've used a minimal amount of code to transform my data, but you could do it without. The main technologies we're going to be using to build this are our vector database, which is going to be Pinecone, Google Sheets. I've basically created a fictitious company called Proxima AI. It has a list of all the employees that work at Proxima, what their roles are. For example, you know, Mia is a CTO. It has an email address, you know, an impact she's had, and a lot of other data that you know could be useful when you build an AI application around this. I'm actually going to be building an AI application around this in my next video, so stay tuned for that. And then we're going to be using NAN to stitch everything together. So this is the automation. Let me just dem demonstrate it. When you click on test workflow in NAN, it's going to be, it's going to start the automation and then the automation will realize that there are new bits of data in our Google Sheet. It's going to get that data. It's then going to transform it by this coding module. You know, this is a custom module that I wrote that takes the data and then transforms it into a more efficient and a more optimized way of storing the data in the vector database. It's going to then take that data and then split it up and chunk it. And then it's going to send that those chunks to the embedding model from OpenAI, which is going to turn the text into a vector and then store all of that information in the vector database. Well, perfect timing. So now it's done. If I go to my vector database, I have data stored there, which has come from my Google Sheets. So all of this data is now in my database, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to show you how to build this step by step. So we're going to need to start with Google Sheets. So if I click on that and search for Google Sheets, Google Sheets should come up here. And then whenever we're going to start this trigger, whenever there is a row added or if a row has been updated, and then we're going to need to connect this to our Google Sheets. So what we're going to need to do is create a new credential, sign in with Google. It's going to send us to the sign in page and then we just need to authenticate. So once that's done, press continue, then we go back here. And now we can use that credential. We don't actually need to have any polling times. We're just going to trigger this when we run the automation. So we'll close this. And now we have access to all of the Google Sheets that I have in my Google account. So I can connect to that Google Sheet, which is where I have the data. I can then add this sheet where the data is stored. So it's in sheet and this is the trigger. So everything's good. I'm just going to run this to see if there are no errors. Cool. And it's got all of the data. Awesome. So now what I need to do is connect this to a custom code module that I've written. So we need to search for code. And then I want to run some JavaScript code, which transform the data that's coming into Google Sheets. And what it basically does is for each row in our sheet, it's going to group all of the text into one string. The reason why this is useful is because when we store data in Pinecone, it's going to be stored as vectors. And we want to group all the information together because all of that information will be represented by one vector. Granted, it'll be a big, bigger vector, but it's just one vector. So when my LLM queries the data, let's say if it asks for an email for a specific employee, it can grab other contextual information because it's in the same vector space. So it implies context into the search if you group all of the information together. If you don't do this, then your queries have to be very specific because everything will be disjointed. So if I query for the email, I'm not going to know whose email it is or the role of the person who, whose email that belongs to because they're disjointed in my database. So I need to transform that data. So let's say const transformed data is equal to an empty array. 
then when the data comes in for each object I basically want to create a big chunk of text so we do const text is equal to this and I know this might be this might look horrible but basically what this is doing it's getting for each object it's basically taking the value and putting it into the string and this does it across all columns in my Google Sheet and then what I want to do is I want to push this as transform data so transformed data dot push and then I want to push text and then I want to return this so return transform data so now the output should just be a simplified version of the input so let's te test this coming in and look what's popped out so for each one of the objects it's just creating another object but all of the values in each column are concatenated together so and then we can just pass this on to our vector database so I need to create a vector database with pinecone so I search for pinecone in here then I want to add documents to a vector store so I need to connect pinecone to NAN to do this you know I need to create an account with pinecone and then I go to API keys, I create a new API key, let's call it a test test, and then I create the key. So now that's created, what I can do is go back to my automation and then create a new credential, put my API key in here, save that. It's called Pinecone Account 4. It's connected, insert mode, and I want to choose the index. So I have two indexes here. Let me create a new index. So if I go to the database, I create a new index, let's call it test. An index allows you to quickly search for data that you want. So all my data related companies are gonna be stored in this index. So I can quickly find that data when I want it. Then I'm gonna select the embedding model, which is gonna be the OpenAI. Text embedding three large. Store it on AWS in Virginia. Because this is a free tier, we're not allowed to choose other locations but we're just we just have the option to deploy it here so now i'm going to create the index so that's done and i can use that in my module in nan so if i add this if i refresh this if i select test and that's all good so now i need to add a document loader to this module I click on this, I'll select the default one, it's going to load JSON, and then I want to have a splitter which basically is a thing which chunks the data that's coming in. So I'm going to choose a recursive character text splitter. So now I can set the chunk size. So this has some implications. If I wanted to, if I have a large chunk size, then that means, you know, the vectors are going to be a lot larger. It's going to require more computational power, but it's going to give you more context for a query. So a query can have more scope, but there can be a lot of noise of data when, you know, the data gets returned to, to the UI. If I reduce the chunk size, it's going to make the data a lot more precise. So the queries have to be a lot more precise and I'm not going to get as much, you know, context from the data that I'm going to get returned from the database. So I'm just going to leave it as a thousand. And then I'm going to choose the embedding module. So this is going to be, I'm going to choose OpenAI's embedding module. I'm going to choose the same one I chose in my vector database. So this is going to be large. And then that is done. So now if I test this workflow, it's going to run. It's got the data. It's splitting it up, embedding it and then storing it. So if I go to my index test, if I refresh this, you can see now there's data being populated. Awesome. That's so cool. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope it's given you value. I'm going to be creating more videos in AI. So I'm glad you came and I'll see you soon. Peace.